Good morning, good morning. Yes, we're back to a Sunday. The fourth Sunday in Advent. The fourth Sunday. And yes, <laughs> I'm still wearing the same shirt. Today we think in the Gospel about Mary visiting Elizabeth. You see, God understands us. He understands us more than we think. Mary had been challenged by the angel. Will you, as a virgin, allow God to conceive a child in your womb? Now, it had never happened before. It never happened before. It's never happened since. This was a one-off occasion. Mary could not understand how this could happen. She says to the angel, how can this be? Do you want, do you want me to go out and uh, get married quickly to Joseph, to whom I betrothed? Shall, do, what do you want me to do? And the angel says, no, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And the child that can be born, in your, born from your womb will be the Son of God. And God is going to give to him the throne of his father, David. Now, in a very real sense, we, we don't understand the importance of this occasion because we know the result. Some weeks ago, I enjoy watching it. There was a, a film on television, The Battle of Britain. You know, it's a good film. I enjoy watching the film. But the trouble is that watching that film, you see, I know the outcome before it starts. I know <laughs> how it finishes. You know, the people going through it in 1939, when war was being declared, had no idea how it was going to work out. They had no idea what was going to happen. And therefore they were troubled and they were frightened and they were worried because they knew this country wasn't prepared to fight another war. And in their hearts, they didn't want to fight another war. They still had the memories, a lot of them, of the First World War and all the tragedies that that had brought. And now here they have been asked to fight another world war and they had no idea where it was going. But you see, I know the results. So I watch that film and I enjoy that film, but I can't really enter into the fear or the apprehension of people living in 1939. So in a sense, we know the outcome of what the angel says to Mary. But she must have still been thinking, well, I said yes. I say yes, because if God is asking this, I want to say yes, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Of course, I will allow him to do it. If that's what God wants, I'll allow him to do it. And then the angel disappears. But before he goes, he says to her, Oh, by the way, your cousin Elizabeth has also conceived a child in her old age. You know, the family's always said, very sorry about that couple. They always wanted a child, unable to have a child. Something's wrong. One of them is infertile. We don't know what it is. She said, your cousin Elizabeth who is well past menopause. She has now conceived a child in her old age. So I suspect Mary going back to the house thought, well, was it a hallucination? Was I just daydreaming? Well, it's one way to find out, and that's to visit Elizabeth. And the story today talks about Mary going to visit Elizabeth. And when she gets there, even though Elizabeth had not told anybody else about it, she'd kept herself confined in the house, almost fearful. I expect, almost worried, in case she would miscarry this child. I mean, she's not sure exactly what's going to happen here. But when Mary visits her, suddenly she exclaims, when I heard the voice of you coming into the house, the babe in my womb leapt for joy and Remember, the child in Mary's room had only probably been a couple of weeks after it had been fertilized. But the child in Elizabeth's room literally leaps for joy because somehow John, who was going to become John the Baptist, recognizes the presence of his Lord in the womb of Mary. A most amazing story, a most amazing story. But we know the outcome, so it's not quite the same as it would have been for her. Excuse me a moment. It's not the same as it would have been for her at that particular time. But as we come to Christmas, well, we are going to be rejoicing as well. We have a couple of days left. As I said, I'm going to stop these videos today. 
If you don't want to continue them, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll put, probably put one out on Christmas Day, or perhaps for St. Stephen. We'll talk about it later in the week, but I will send one out to you for Christmas. But then we'll come back to it again on January the 2nd. But we too are now approaching this great feast of Christmas, and we are rejoicing at what has happened. And yes, once again, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we get ready, yes, I'm going to sing. First of all, of course, I need my spectacles. I'm going to sing something today, perhaps it's not very Christmassy. I am a new creation. That's really what it's all about. Actually, I don't know what the future is. Mary didn't know what the future was, but I don't know it either. I just trust God for it. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. You're in the grace of God I stand. My heart is overflowing, my love just keeps on growing. You're in the grace of God I stand. And I will praise you, Lord, yes, I will praise you, Lord, and I will sing of all that you have done. A joy that knows no limit, a lightness in my spirit, you're in the grace of God I stand. May God bless you as you prepare for the great feast of Christmas. Amen. <laughs>